All right, guys. Hi, we're going to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas today. I know it's a good one. I know you guys have been looking forward to this book. All right, here we go. Every who down in Whoville a lot, like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his grinchy fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas for coming. For tomorrow, he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, noise, noise. The one thing he hated, the noise, noise, noise. And the Who's young and old would sit down to feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, feast, feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast beef which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must put a stop to this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderfully awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. He made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. He clucked and he clucked. What a great Grinchy trick with this coat and this hat. I will look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread, he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackled sleigh he hitched up to old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up, and the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's laid a snooze in in town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. The Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed through the roof, empty bags in his fists. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. And he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates and drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimbley. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out the icebox as quick in a flash. Why that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree he started to shove when he heard a small sound, a coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, like Cindy Lou who, was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who had gotten out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Sandy Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why?
But you know that old Grinch was smart and so slick. He thought up a lie. He thought up it quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Sandy Claus lie. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it to my workshop, my dear, and I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child, then he patted her head, got her a drink, and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went up the chimney and stuffed the tree up. The last thing he took was the log for the fire. He went up the chimney himself, that old liar. On the walls, he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter past dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsels, the trimmings and trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he grinchously grim. They're finding out now no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then down on Whoville will all the cry who. Boo hoo! The noise grin the Grinch, I must simply hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, but then started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad why this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry very. He stared at the Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it just came the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feast, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he found and thought before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, didn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel so quite tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys, the food for the feast, and he, he himself cut the roast beef. Oh, this is one of my favorite Christmas stories. I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you next time.